football game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> multitasking, so, right? Yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to multitask. <laughs> so, but no, um, it, it, this is a very good topic because I mean. It, with the way everything took place with the pandemic, you have a lot of people working hybrid remotely 100%. And so oftentimes you have folks that are either at home and have the many distractions around the house, the kids, the dogs, the cats, and could be the nosy neighbors, you never know. Um, and how do you manage life in that type of environment? And that's the one thing that we have to figure out as, as uh, business owners or product owners or uh, leaders in our organization, we have to figure out how can we get through these distractions. And I think that's the hardest thing. And I have a, um, like I said, I wanna share this PowerPoint here. Let me see, bear with me. All right, share screen. All right, let me know if you can see this. Yep, we can okay. see it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I will, um, that way you won't see all of my dirty notes on the side. So this is pretty much our life today. Um, you get, got the guy working from his bed, you got the desk, you see how junky it is, you got all of the distractions on the outside of the home that really, I mean, it, it affects, I mean, it affects our day to day. It affects our lives. I mean, I live in an apartment downtown Cleveland. I have a, a 10 story high rise going up right across from my desk right now. So every meeting that I sit on, they can hear the construction from that building going on. So I have to figure out how to eliminate some of that noise, some of that distractions. And so I play what's called cafe jazz. I mean, it really helps. Everyone feels like they are on an, an elevator and because I can see them sometimes kind of dance into the music. So it works out. But you do have to put yourself in a space to where you can actually go and um, be successful. And I think once you eliminate some of the distractions that we have uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you will become more successful. So I'm gonna touch on three of these items. Um, getting rid of the distractions in your work environment. And like I said, especially when you're working from home, uh, telling everyone to sit down, stay out of your work area. You're in a meeting, you're in a call. I mean, just literally block out everyone around you. Um, optimize your tools and techs to be uh, distraction free. Everyone has one of these. <laughs> and so sometimes you do have to turn it upside down, turn it off, do not disturb, push it out of the way. And that way it doesn't take you away from your meetings like mine right now. It's sitting off to the side. That way I'm not disturbed while I'm uh, speaking with you guys. And then the final one is minimize your internal distractions. And uh, we'll kind of dive into the internal distractions here shortly. Any questions so far? Come on, I'm interactive. Talk to me. Well, I'll, I'll make a comment. I, I'm glad that you <laughs> added um, internal distractions, right? Because, um, and so I'm, I'm interested once you get to that part, because we don't think about that a lot of times as our part of our daily distractions that we have. We know that there's a lot of thoughts and and like you said, particularly since the pandemic and a lot of things that are going on in the news and things of that nature, those internal distractions can be just of an issue, just like everything external that we can't control. So That's I appreciate correct. that you added that on there. Yes. And sometimes our mind could be our biggest enemy. <laughs> so. All right. So let's kind of dive into these uh, getting rid of distractions. Um, especially when you're working from home, remove clutter from your workspace. Um, my girlfriend, she always looks at my desk. Why is your desk so messy? Babe, I know exactly where everything is on my desk. So don't touch anything. 
if you move one pin, I'm not going to be able to do my job effectively. So leave everything like it is. <laughs> but um, oftentimes, if you do have clutter and you need to find something uh, that you don't deal with on a day to day basis, it will completely take you um, off of your game. Uh, I mean, it takes you, I mean, your mind goes somewhere else when it, when you're looking for that one note, or what one notepad that you wrote that note on. So having it available to you during your meetings, during your discussions. So you, to be able to do that, you need to have a clean workspace. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, design your immediate environment for laziness. Can anyone explain to me what they think that means? Come on, don't everybody speak at once. Hi, this is Yolanda. Hello, young lady. Um, I think it means to design it to where everything is at an arm's reach, even though you don't feel like looking for it, is easily accessible. So that means you need to be organized. Exactly. That and try not to prop yourself up on the couch while you're working and throwing your feet up on the table because you might decide to take a nap and you can't easily reach something on your desk if you're on the couch with the pillow behind your head with the laptop on your on your knees. So yeah, exactly. Um, choosing the right music for the task. So it goes back to the point about the construction that's going on outside of my apartment. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a old school hip hop head and I, I can't have old school hip hop going in the background if, as I'm going through meetings or uh, and having discussions with individuals. So I have to have just a calm, mellow type music um, on in the background. So I listen to cafe jazz. And so regardless of the construction, that's what people are gonna hear. And so I think it's a nice mellow type of music. There's no words, all you hear is instruments and it's beautiful. And the final thing is the optimized work space for light, nature, and air. Um, with the temperatures changing the way that they are right now, a lot of people like to open windows and hear the birds and whatnot. And that can be a distraction because everyone has these trucks with the loud pipes and the exhaust and that type of thing. And if one of those happened to drive down your streets while you got the windows open, listening to the birds, it could completely distract your train of thought. So you do have to opt optimize your workspace for that type of uh, event to happen. So, excuse me. And you, so you wanna make sure that you are not going to be distracted by those types of events. Optimizing your tools and tech to be distraction free. Um, notifications you have to go through to make sure that you are doing an audit on those. I know we have a, a team's chat here at work for our um, employee resource group. And I know many of them have muted their um, notifications because it could get cumbersome. It can, there's a lot of them that happen. And so we do have to send emails when we have events going on to ensure that those communications are being read by everyone. But you do have to do an audit to ensure that the notifications are not a distraction for you. Um, I know like Apple and I don't know about Androids, but they have that when you're driving, hit do not disturb. And so that way you're not distracted while you're driving. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys drive in Ohio, but there is a new law in place that if you get caught with your phone in your hand that you can get a $150 fine. So again, that's just another form of distraction. So make sure you do an audit to ensure that all of your notifications are controlled and will not distract you while you're working. And this one I just started using. Do not disturb. Um, 
I actually have a point in my day that I block off an hour or two uh, to go on Do Not Disturb. And I use that opportunity to go and learn something new. Uh, I go to a website, I figure out how to code something, how to write something. And so that's my opportunity to block out all the noise, no IMs coming across, no emails coming across. I've literally turned my phone off and this is my opportunity to fill my head with as much knowledge as possible. So learn to love, do not disturb and be okay with using it. And that's sometimes even with family. Hey, I'm gonna be glued to this computer for the next hour. I don't wanna hear anything. Don't ask me for anything to eat. Don't ask me for anything to drink. Here it is here, if you want it. If you, Here's your food if you want it, here it is. But you have to get to the point that you are okay with um, utilizing Do Not Disturb. And push as much of your work to your laptop. Um, <clears throat> Oftentimes people like to come by my desk and say, hey, you have a minute, you have time to look at this. Okay, you got up out of your seat, walked around the corner, came to my desk to tap me on the shoulder to ask me if I can come to your desk to look at something. There is a much simpler way. Share your screen with me, email it to me, I am it to me. It doesn't require that effort. <laughs> for you to come and distract whatever it is that I'm working on. Like say, for instance, right now, someone can walk up to me not knowing that I'm talking to you guys, asking me to come to their desk to look at something. Send me a simple email, send me an IM, and give me that opportunity to finish whatever it is that I'm working on and then respond back to you. Okay, any questions so far? Any statements? Well, I'm, you know, you know, I'm gonna say something, Eric. <laughs> so, um, that that do not disturb. That's that's critical, right? When you think about the guided minute trap, and a lot of people they may not know you're in the middle of something, right? So, like you said, leveraging those tools to kind of help you have less distractions um, can be very helpful. And you know, I've even had to go to a point, I, and I don't know if other folks, if you have some tips on what you may have used, whether it might be in the office or it might be from, from home. Um, just as simple, like you said, we're on a call right now. Um, here's my high tech. I don't know if you can probably see it. I actually have a printed sign that says, you know, call in progress, for example, right? Because sometimes now people wear headphones for a lot of different things, sometimes to um, have the least amount of distractions. So they may be listening to music, um, but you may be on an important call, right? And so sometimes using the least amount of technology as a piece of paper, informing people like I'm, I'm busy right now, I can get back to you, but, you know, using some simple tools, um, like that can definitely help, but do not disturb. I don't think it's used as often, like you said, Eric, because when you go ahead, you're getting no, ready to say I, something. I would say you're, that's a perfect, uh, perfect point. I mean, we're on Microsoft Teams right now, and that feature is available uh, for anyone with Microsoft. And I, I love the fact that it gives you the opportunity. They have a, 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 pr a program now that it tells you, all right. I want you to go and schedule my do not disturb right now. <laughs> I can't right. go in, in my calendar and schedule it. So you do it for me. Right. And so the system will actually look at your calendar and say, okay, I'm going to block off this time for the rest of this week or the rest of this month for you to be focused and do not disturb. And that way it goes out to everyone and it's blocked on your calendar for that period. And so yeah. sometimes we do have to, you know, have that push to utilize these resources. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Miss James. <laughs> so, um, so yes, you really want to push a lot up to your laptop. So, if you can, you know, minimize the walk ups and uh, tap on the shoulders, that'd be great. So, uh, let's see. Let me find my next one here and. Uh, Final one here. Minimizing your internal distractions. 
like I said, sometimes our minds could be our worst enemies. And so anytime you have a busy lifestyle, oftentimes, man, I got to do this. 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 All that's doing is pulling away from the things that you're supposed to be doing, you know, right now. And so you have to figure out a way um, how to prioritize. And so oftentimes, I mean, that's both personal and work related. You have to figure out how to prioritize your life. And so outside of work, you have, you know, a home. I mean, I got to wash dishes. I got to cook. I got to wash these clothes. I got to wash the car, mow the yard, get the leaves. You can get consumed by that. And again, those are all internal distractions. No one else knows what you have going on in your head but you. And so utilize the resources that are available for you uh, to help prioritize your life. There's an app out there called Get Things Done. Utilize it. Use it as an opportunity to, for you to go out and plan your life out. And uh, I think I said in one of the meetings before, Chris, you made the reference how you basically block everybody out of your life for a period. <laughs> Sometimes as adults, we have to do that. You have to have that ability to be able to just, hey, I love all of y'all. But for this next 15 minutes, you don't know me. <laughs> right, right. Because you you are amazed at how much you can get done without having those distractions, right? What If you had the normal distractions, it may take you two to three hours, you mm -hmm. know, to do. And then if you had planned time where you're like, okay, I'm going to spend this first hour of the day or an hour at the end of the day or whatever it might be where there's absolutely no distractions, I can probably get 10 to 20 things done, right? And it'd be done okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. As opposed okay. to, you know, <laughs> I say okay, right? They may not be perfect, but, you know, they'll be okay. As opposed to when you have all these distractions, you know, it's like you get started with something and then that didn't get finished. And then someone asked you about something, then you get started with something else. And then that may not get finished, you know, right away in the fullest intent. So when you kind of, like you said, block that time, you have a better chance and, you know, getting things complete. You may actually have a good idea um, mm -hmm. that come up, right? Because they say for artists and um, people who have great inventions, it's not because they were in the busy of everything. Sometimes it's when they're in the quiet Right. Um, and then they can come up with those things. So, yeah, sometimes you just have to be like, don't bother me right now. I'm doing this for me. Let, help me help you by not right. bothering me. Right, <laughs> right. right. And, and, and Well, before I say that, anyone else have anything else to add to that? I, right. I know I'm, Eric and I are I'm going to get you to guys off of mute eventually. <laughs> We're going to remove the mute button so you guys could speak up so I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, Chris, talk to me. Um, no. Uh, no, this Chris. The other Chris. Okay. <laughs> we got two oh, Chris. yeah. You wasn't getting away it. without me saying something on this call. I love it. Um, so when I'm thinking of prioritize, I would write a list down of everything that I needed to get done and realize there's things that can actually wait because something that seems like is a priority can actually wait a little bit later in the day so that you don't spend too much time dwelling and trying to spread yourself so thin between so many different projects here and there. Yep. Just discussing that with somebody about their schoolwork right now. <laughs> It, it works. And, it, you know, to that point, Chris, I, I installed a whiteboard in my uh, apartment for that purpose. I mean, I put I write it all up there, write it all up there. And I, I think half of the things that I write up there, I never even have to touch. It's just there because I thought it was important at the time. I put it on the whiteboard and I never even touched it. So it happens that way sometimes. So that's a good point. Anyone else? Out. Did you want to uh, comment on just that one or any of the four that's up there? Any, any of them. Well, okay. I'm going to save the energy one for last because that one is very important to us as adults. We don't listen to our body enough. 
and and it causes stress and stress is taking a lot of our people out of this uh this life and so that energy one is very important so we're going to save that one for last but go ahead you can comment on any of them all right that we've that we've discussed sorry chris i'm still stealing a little bit of your shine but uh you want to call me captain uh disturb everybody with a uh, batch communication times with your teams I like to set a positive energy in our ERG group first thing in the morning. So I may say something goofy. I may just put out positive energy of a good morning. And that's any team that I am a part of because you never know how somebody's day started or who needed a positive word to start their day. I'm taking something from my last two supervisors since I have supervisor experience, but I've learned something from them of communication times with your teams. We all have work to do, but you do not want your team to feel like they are not a priority. So you have to set time to talk to each individual person on your team so that they can speak their piece. They have time to prepare what they want to talk to you about. So that way you can give them your undivided attention and that way you can accomplish a common goal. You do not want anybody on your team to feel like they are brushed off. Mm -hmm. That's all I had on that point. Yeah, and then that's where the whole 101 uh, scenarios come in at. So you make that time to uh, allow them to have that uh, uninterrupted one-on-one -on -one time. So allow them to get whatever thoughts and feelings they have going on for them to be able to do their jobs out of the way. So. So I'd like to elaborate on what Chris said. Mm -hmm. um, I. He's absolutely right. And that's something that I try to do. But what I find when you do that, many times you will eliminate those. Do you have a minute? If you take that time with them and then set aside for them. Yolanda, uh, you're going in and out. And then you don't have to have them. Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda, if you can hear us, can can you repeat? Because you you went in and out when you were. Oh, I'm sorry. I took the wrong one out. Okay. <laughs> I had two headphones in. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that was a that was a first, but that was good. That was, that was real good. Did my you point get across? I was gonna say you were on the right track, but if you could repeat it. <laughs> Okay, so I, have, them. <laughs> I have different headphones in each ear. This is for my phone and this is, okay. Anyway, <laughs> my point was elaborating on what Chris said is if you have that one-on-one -on -one time, it gives you an opportunity to address some of those, do you have a minute all at once and maybe take 15 minutes, 30 minutes out to get rid of several issues where do you have a minute might have been five or six interruptions during the day. Basically, that was it in a nutshell. It sounds better the second time. So. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Okay. Yeah, but that that was definitely great. And, right. it, and that that's a good point. I mean, it like I said, it gives the employees or your your team members the opportunity to be able to, they, you know, let, here I'm going to regurgitate everything that I'm having an issue with right now. That way, I don't have to keep coming back to you and disturbing you. And oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> those those types of moments. So yes, that's a that's a good point. And I find that sometimes a lot of the issues they may be having is related. And once you have that conversation and then you're helping to give them the tools to try to settle some of this stuff on their own in the future to eliminate, again, some of those, do you have a minute moments? Right. Yes. Good stuff. Okay. Anyone else? That that can work for family or friends too, right? Because you can, you can have a, a family member or a friend uh, they may call and text you every every couple of minutes when there's an update and it might just be like, 
hey, you know what? Why don't we just chat like about seven o'clock and then we'll catch up on <laughs> on everything. People mean well, but, you know, yeah. there's times when, you know, that can be you want to stay connected definitely to your family and friends throughout the day. Um, but then those can be some major distractions. And so, yes. you know, we may have to put a time for them as well. That's what do not disturb is for, because as fast as they want to keep in touch with you, they forget that you have to prioritize your job. I, I can't keep looking at my phone because you want to talk about what's coming on at seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You mean you don't want to know about the oval, Chris? No. <laughs> It can wait till 5.15. I don't need to know about it at 10.34 in the a.m. when I just started work at 9 a.m. Oh, this sounds personal, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, this this wasn't to attack anybody. Look, and yeah, just yeah, yeah. so you get my face with a, with a camera. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, great. This was, Yeah, I'm in the office. So uh, I'm going to cut that off. Uh, <laughs> no, this wasn't a personal attack of nobody. I'm sure we've all gone through it. That's why he started talking about do not disturb, because they may want to talk about something that's not really that important and forget that you prioritize your day so that you can get your work done in that compartmentalized beginning, and then you can focus on all the distraction and stuff later. That's right. That's why I only talk to Eric two days out the week. Because <laughs> Eric's always on do not disturb. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. No, no I, it, it, it is beautiful because being, you know, again, in my in my capacity, I have uh, the reach of a lot of individuals and I love it. I love I love the family <laughs> that I've I've established here in Cleveland. And you just never know where you're going to be pulled. And so that's the beauty of it. Like I said, Chris tapped me on the shoulder. Never met her other than the last lunch and learn. But again, I felt that it was my fiduciary duty <laughs> to be a part of this event. And so that's why uh, you just never know when you are truly needed. But being able to have that space at that time established in your day to day workload allows you to be able to plug something in if need it be. So that's the point that I'm making. Um, so if anyone doesn't have anything else, I'm going to touch on this last item here. Um, your body is energy. Um, I'm looking at the, the pictures that are on the call right now, and I don't think any of us are under the age of 18, so we're all getting older. Uh, put that hand down. Um, we need to listen to our bodies, and uh, our bodies uh, will let us know um, when to proceed, when to stop, when to, hey, slow down a little bit. And oftentimes, we ignore it. And so we let the grind of uh, of the position drive us to the point that we ignore our bodies, uh, energy that is putting off to us. And I was listening to a call yesterday. I was listening to uh, uh, Sway in the morning. Sway, he had the only female billionaire of African American descent on his show yesterday. And it's a Jamaican uh, descent lady that played at University of Yukon, and she is part ownership to three NBA basketball teams. And they ask her, what do you do? I mean, how do, how do you get to this point? She says, I have to dedicate time and energy to work and family. She has five kids. But every night she said that she sits down and have story time or tea with those five kids. I'm like, you're a billionaire and you're sitting at home having tea with, a, you know, with five kids. He's like, yes, yeah, because I have to make time for that. Because if not, I get pulled out of my family towards the business and then my family is neglected. So her energy is allowing her to be able to spread herself across both her business and her family. And it's allowing her to continue her prosper and her growth in the uh, community and in the business world. But um, yeah, 
uh, Trisha, Trisha Davis, I think that's her name. But yeah, it was it was a great interview. But yeah, we have to listen to our bodies and listen and respect the energy that our, our bodies are push, pushing off to us to ensure that we're not pushing ourselves to an early grave. All right. I, I had, uh, of course, I had one more thing, so this may help, too, with, with some individuals. I like how you brought up that scenario, you know, how to balance um, work and family, because it's really not a, a balance. You know, a lot of times it's integration. You're trying to do things in between the day to try to get things done. But even with your energy, um, you know, for certain projects, you may have to do some things earlier in the day because then that's when your mind and your energy is the most sharp. Um, but if you know that your energy is on a decline, you may not want to pick the most complicated project to try to do or something that's the most detailed. So even within that within that day, like you said, your body's going to lead you um, definitely on what you're able to to do or we've been in meetings where you're on that 10th cup of coffee because you had that afternoon <laughs> slump and then it always seems like the biggest questions come up during that time right and that brain just be like ah it is done right it is fried so it's hard sometimes to think through so I even think about the energy throughout the the day you know as far as what you what you get through there's this meme where sometimes it takes some people in the morning they are dragging first thing in the morning. They got the eyes are red, but then when it's time for them to go on vacation, they're up at three o'clock in the morning and they full of energy and they're like, I'm ready to go. I'm <laughs> kind of a thing. So um, it just kind of depends what gets us energized. But, you know, thinking about that energy throughout the day um, could be an impact on how you think things through or who you interact with too. Right. Cause I know like if I'm tired, there's some people I'm like, I may not need to be talking to them. Right right now right right so somebody had a hand hand raised i think it's lashonda lashonda yes and i too like chris i'm in the office hey y'all um <laughs> but so i'm gonna turn you back off but um for me there are several things that goes into this um when i was younger in my 20s there was nothing that could stop me from working um, everything was about you have to be better than everyone else. You have to make sure that everything you do is top notch. You have to perform as a rock star. Um, once I got into my 30s, I realized that that makes you sick. Your body will definitely sit you down if you don't sit down. Um, so now I am to the point of where I work out in the morning. I'm going to get to work on time, but I built time in for where I need to work out. Um, I build time in for the things that I want to do. And I'm not one of your people anymore that's going to be online logging and working at seven or eight o'clock at night. If what we do uh, does not cause destruction in the world. <laughs> We're not life saving <laughs> anything. Um, so uh, with that being the case, you can catch me in the morning. Like my phone is absolutely, like Chris said, it's absolutely going on do not disturb at 10 o'clock and it'll come back on in the morning and I'll see messages. Uh, my brother said something that I thought was kind of morbid, but I'm like, OK, he was like, if the people die at night, they'll still be dead in the morning. So <laughs> that, that's kind of how I'm living is like, OK, we'll, we'll catch you in the morning because I need to get my rest. And I need to make sure that I'm still here. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, well, you know what? Let me elaborate a little bit on Lashonda. <clears throat> You're right. Um, what made me think of the energy um, and going back to, I really like this slide, Eric, you created, because I think they all go together. Um, just like the energy you have to do something, sometimes different situations or people can draw your energy. Yes. They'll just they'll draw it right out of you. And you'll get to know who those people is. And those are the type of people that I want to talk to. And they only get a minute at the end of the day. Otherwise, they will draw my energy at the beginning of the day and I won't be able to be productive. So those are the type of people where we can we schedule something at the end of the day or I can talk to you later or I'm do not disturb to that person whenever because they draw your energy um, in that having the 
having thinking of something as do you have a minute and it ends up drawing more, I think is also important, which go to your prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. And LaShonda, you need to throw yourself into that priority where you don't let them drain you completely without having an opportunity to recharge. So making yourself a priority is your ability to recharge your own energy and then minimize the amount of times that people draw from you that will also make you weak. So I think that this slide speaks to everything, but knowing how to prioritize to manage your time to put all of this together is going to be the bigger benefit. That's it. You know the people in your personal life are part of your teams that you need to bash communications with. So I, my personal time is from seven to nine. I will not be responding to you from five to six. That means don't text me, don't call me, don't nothing me. And then I will get back to you at a later time. See, so, Chris, we yeah, got a lot can... in common because I walk in the door and I'm like, uh-uh, nope, don't even talk to me yet. I need to get it together. <laughs> I, you know, I got to I gotta tell y'all, she had the weirdest look on her face when I approached her before she joined this group. So she definitely had her do not disturb face on. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the beauty of it is, I mean, once you are in that space, you have to be okay with the decisions that you've made on how you prioritize life. How you prioritize people, how you prioritize issues. You have to be okay with that decision. And I, LaShonda's in a space that she's okay with that. I, I'm sure she is. Uh, both uh, LaShonda and I, we deal with uh, um, multiple regions across the globe. And so we have issues. A lot of times we're sitting here waiting for people to finish dinner to have meetings because they're in, you know, China, they're in India, they're in, you know, different parts of the world. And like, I needed you last night. Where were you? Yeah, yeah, but we operate on United States Eastern time. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you, you hate to be that person sometimes, but again, I allowed you to eat dinner during my, you know, 12 o'clock noon time or 1.30, you know, afternoon time. And now I'm supposed to adjust my at home life to accommodate you. And I'm sorry, that's no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but again, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you and hopefully people will get off of uh, mute and chime in with their thoughts and comments. Well, th today we definitely had some pretty good um, topics. I, I hope you all. Uh, agree um, because we know that in life there's going to be distractions <laughs> no matter what um, and we know that um, sometimes they may take a minute and sometimes they may not take a minute they may take an hour it could take a lot more time but I think um, how Eric had a lot of those things laid out as far as making sure you understand your priorities are are key, right? That helps you kind of establish um, how you're going to go about your your day. So, how to get rid of those distractions in your in your work environment? I think we talked about a lot of different um, things that we can do to kind of help manage that, and particularly how do we use the tools? I mean, right now there's a lot more tools than when it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? To help manage. Um, that time, right? Someone used to say um, with a with a cell phone, you know, before there were cell phones, if you just didn't want to talk to somebody, you just took the phone off the hook, right? Um, <laughs> that, that was one way how you can, you know, not be bothered with someone, right? But now there's, there's text messaging, there's instant messaging, there's chat, there's the phone, there's all these different kind of tools that we can get off our game um, throughout the day, but they also can be tools how they can help us manage um, those things like the do not disturb. I think we're all on, we're all over that and we're going to be looking for those features on our, on our technology, whether it's mm -hmm. through Teams, whether it's through your cell phone or how do you manage that time. And also, Eric, you brought up that great tool as far as having a computer maybe help see when you need those focus times, right? And build it into your, 
into your calendar. Um, Yolanda, you had brought up about, you know what, why don't we just make sure we schedule the one-on-one time so that all those things that might have taken a minute throughout the day, why don't we just stop? Let's go through your got a minute, you know, questions. They're probably going to be a lot of them related to each other. Now you Mm -hmm. can get back um, focused on your time. Um, And then I definitely wanted um, that energy um, piece. I think we're all um, in agreement, right? Whether it's how do we um, take care of work and family and how do we integrate that? Uh, Because it's hard to say balance, right? Because if you're not doing one thing, then something else um, is getting done and vice versa. So it's almost, you know, how do you integrate? As, as best as you can, how do you take care of those things? But I'm watching your energy through the day and your energy when you're dealing with certain individuals, because we know that there's some people who can either give you energy, right? right? And those are people that, you know, you don't mind spending some time with, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's some of those people, they, they draw so much energy out of you that you are zapped at the end of the day or at the end of the conversation, and then you don't have hardly anything left to deal with, right? Um, Or you may not be the nicest person to deal with after you interact with those individuals. Uh, So I think these are some key. I'm going to stop and just kind of do, not not a round robin. I I think, Chris, you had like your hand up. You had some comments. And if there's any other suggestions or things that you have done, definitely share um, with the group. All right, so I like to tag team with Eric when we put people on blast. And I just noted that noticed Sierra Hargrove is on this call. Uh, that lady is very busy. She work a job. She participates in events that we come to, and she does a little business on the side. So I would really like her to tell y'all how she avoids distractions and gets all of that done because I want to recognize her and uh, put her on blast at the same time for getting so much accomplished. If she can hear me. There she goes. Wow. Sorry, Thanks a lot, Chris. I said nice stuff about you. I was just trying purpose. to support Mr. Easter. Wow. Um, but, you know, I do struggle with um, family drama on my husband's side. <laughs> Work my business. It's very hard to prioritize. It's very hard to find peace at times. Um, I'm not a person that likes to put myself first. I like to put others first. It's something that I've been struggling with, but it just seems like there's not enough time in the day to get things done and to please everybody. It's, It's very difficult. And I I call myself her big brother because um, I love her to death. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Sierra is the owner of Sierra's Mission, which uh, feeds the homeless across Cleveland, Ohio. And that's why she has that that type of mentality that she needs to take care of people. But in the same token, we try to inform her that you are important to everyone that you encounter as well. So what you do is great. And so you don't have to feel like you have to please everyone, but put forth that effort into taking care of yourself sometime because if you are gone, we're hurting. So, but that no, it, this, this is good. Um, thank you, Chris. I wasn't going to do that because she would just show up at my desk and be ready to fight. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to because she don't know where I sit at, so she's not going to find me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank yes, you. ma'am. Yep. And Sierra, you have to make sure that you fill your cup so then you can pour into others. Right. So you like um, I forget who has said it, how they just have to plan the time on the calendar um, to do it. Right. So you have to do that. It's it's the same thing as the instructions, as they say on the plane, you know, put your mask on before you assist somebody else. Right. So just you have to plan that time. It's hard because, you know, like you said, you have that giving spirit. And, um, you know, everybody else becomes a priority. But like what Eric said, if you don't take care of yourself, then who's going to be around when you're not doing it right Mm -hmm. Um, and doing it the way that you do. So just make sure you take some time to pour into yourself. And it's hard, whether it's a few minutes, if you need a quick nap, 
whether you need to get on a spin bike, you know, people who exercise, I guess they do that. I'm not an exerciser. Um, I might need to listen to music or I might need to go do a quick, you know, trip to the museum or whatever it is to help make you feel good. That'll help fill your cup to take care of somebody else. Right. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we have Valerie. Valerie. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So I agree with Sierra and everything that everyone said so far. I mean, right now I'm in a crazy situation. So I am listening to this um, presentation. I'm actually still working, which is ridiculous, but I have so much to do before two o'clock. It's like ridiculous. But what I did not want to do was not participate in today. So even though I haven't said much, I am listening. I am getting all the information that you all are talking about. And I so appreciate it all. Um, I can relate to everything. And I just had to come clean. I am working right now. And this is ridiculous. I can't even take that moment for myself to, you know, get some extra feedback, some, you know, recognition and acknowledgement of all the things that everyone goes through. So I just have to, you know, at least admit, you know, this is ridiculous, but um, I am the same way. I, I, I have a lot on my plate at work. I have a lot on my plate at home. Um, and it is hard to prioritize, but I do the best that I can so that I'll have some sanity. Um, unfortunately, you know, my me time is when I go to bed. So I'm on, you know, clock 24 seven. Um, but if I wasn't doing it, who would, right? <laughs> right? It won't get done, right? So if I'm not pushing my spouses, I'm not pushing my children, if I'm not pushing, you know, my employees or my customers, you know, how would I get these things done? So it can be a curse, you know, sometimes, but, you know, I wouldn't change it um for anything so i appreciate everybody's input and um their uh observation thank you for coming off of mute and finding time for us now <laughs> <laughs> i know i feel bad don't don't i'm just gonna walk over and find a way to disconnect your laptop um how about get me some help i'll be great <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll come be your admin. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know I'm going to mess with you, Miss James, because you're just sitting there smiling like you just got something you want to say. So go for it. Here's your opportunity. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie James, and I am not in Cleveland. <laughs> So I am uh, in, actually in Farmington, Arkansas at uh, my store, and I am a family member to Eric, and I saw his invite on LinkedIn, so I came on to support and to learn a few things, which I did, and I can most definitely agree with everyone that um, you do have to listen to your body. As Eric stated, I am getting older. I have priorities with my business and with my personal life with my family, my children, and my husband. So just learning to um, try to figure out how to prioritize everything, um, that's definitely, um, I could agree with, I think it was Ms. Valerie that said, or someone that said that they um, they don't really have much me time until they go to bed. I can relate to that as well. So I've been trying to practice and figure out other things to do to prioritize myself and make sure I can get things done effectively. So I felt like this was a very good seminar with great advice. So thank you and thank you for the opportunity to allow me to join. Thank you, thank you. Amanda, don't think you've gotten away from me. I'm gonna, I'm going down the list. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. I'm driving today. I actually was a, I was a late entry, a friend of mine posted your, your video. So Mr. Easton, I appreciate you taking the time to do this, Ms. Chris. Thank you so much for uh, making this happen. Um, I definitely uh, struggle with prioritizing myself, uh, but a lot of the things you said made me reevaluate how I impose myself on other people's time. Um, I am no longer a uh, an island, right? I have a team that I now support and I want to make sure that I'm cautious of their 
expectations, their needs, um, specifically uh, that that piece at the end about how we have to watch our body. And I think that I have the expectation that my team works the same way that I do. And I work at a very high level and I actually, I have ADHD, right? Um, and that causes me to overwork. And I recognize that now as an adult, um, but that should not be the expectation of everybody else. Uh, so after this meeting or after this presentation, excuse me, I am going to start asking my team what time would be best to to meet with them, to give them the space to a lot, a block of time to talk to me or mm -hmm. for me to ask questions when I need immediate responses. That's that's awesome. Is and that, that you, worth the wait? I hope it was worth the wait. Whew. Oh, yes. I mean, like I say, that's a perfect way to uh, to to segue into uh, uh, Miss Natalie. But yes, that was good information. And being an account executive, you do have to have that 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 difference uh, that be able to separate um, and, and to allow yourself to uh, pull your team with you instead of push them. So that's great. So Miss Natalie. We save the best for last. Oh, goodness. Hello. <laughs> um, this is very interesting, and I can't wait to look at that app you said about um, getting things done. I had not heard of that, so I might follow up. Um, my biggest thing that I have found that helps me um, with time management is uh, I turned off my notifications, my push notifications on my phone. So then I have, when I'm ready, like at lunch, my lunch break for personal things, um, then I will see who's texting or what do they need or what's going on. And that has let me focus better at work. Um, but at work, I'm also really good at putting on headphones to drown out some of my office mates. But I don't know that I'm always polite about it. <laughs> I have a little bit of, I would like to get better at saying, this is not a good time. Could we talk some other time? Or somehow establishing that boundary in a courteous way. Yeah. But, um, so it's practice, right? Trying to find how we need to maintain ourselves and not get, especially from those people who suck the energy. Um, that's an ongoing project. <laughs> All right. But that's what I got. Well, no, thank we you. Appreciate this is really it. helpful. Yes, we appreciate you jumping on and uh, sharing your insights. And Chris, I am officially done. Wow. This was this was awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, I got a lot of a lot of tips. Um, and I I just want to when we're thinking about it seems like a lot of us are trying to think about how do we have that time for ourselves. And you don't have to, even though we may want a whole day or we may want a whole hour, sometimes they could be the the mini boosts that you can do throughout the day mm -hmm. to give you that um moment to fill yourself back up so then you can deal with what you have to deal with and um who was it the the last person that we um just spoke um and about how do you tactfully tell people if you don't have time to do something and no is a answer and it is a full sentence yes. so sometimes in, in you, multiple languages yes in multiple, <laughs> in multiple languages um so with practice you know you'll get you'll get better at it or how do you redirect um those those things because sometimes that's hard when you're in a in a space where you have to say yes many 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 times to many many people sometimes it's hard to say no um, but it is a full sentence um, and sometimes it takes practice. So this was um, a fantastic conversation. Um, I think we've all picked up a lot of different nuggets. Thank you for being engaging. Um, even with, when Eric dragged it out of y'all, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, definitely would like to see some of you all at any future um, Lunch and Learns. We have different topics, so whether they are um, work 
development skills or personal development skills, or sometimes they're just informative. Um, they are they are free um, so um, and open to the public. So you don't have to be a member of Dress for Success or someone who's receiving services. So I thank you. Thank you very much, Eric Easter, for a fantastic presentation. So you all didn't even know there was actually a video. We didn't even need the video. There was like a four minute video. And so I think, you know, us talking about the real world things that we deal with is more important than just looking at a, a video to set an example. So I thank you um, for that. And so I know we're two minutes over, so we want to definitely be respectful of everybody's time because we went over two minutes for the got a minute. So I want to make sure you get back your time for the rest of the day. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank Have you. Have an awesome day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, Chris. Bye. Hey, Chris, you still there? Ah, uh, crap. Never mind.